Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Kind of Funny Games. You've been here before, probably, but we've not shown you this game yet. My name is Colin Moriarty. This is the illustrious Nick Scarpino. Nick, we're here to play arguably PlayStation 1's best game um, and one of the best games of all time. Tekken. Uh, Tekken, exactly. The original Tekken. Battle Arena Toshin Den. Now, we're here to play <laughs> Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Now, usually... You know, I get a little hyperbolic sometimes with my, my proclamations of best games, worst games, all those kinds of things. Sometimes, we often a little do. hyperbolic. But there are a few people that would dispute that this is one of the great games of all time. Okay. Um, How does this rank up to the original Castlevania that we played last time? Way, way better than the original way Castlevania. This is, okay. this is, I love Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Castlevania 3. This is, this game is godlike. Godlike. Okay, I'm excited. Well, you know, I've never seen Godlike stuff before, so this is cool. So you said this came out on PS1. We're playing it on PS3 right now, right? Indeed, and and uh, we're playing on PS3. You can download this on uh, PlayStation Network, and you can play it on PS3, PSP, or Vita. Um, additionally, you can play it on your Xbox 360. If you have your PS1, you can play it on Saturn. It came out on Saturn, I think, in Japan. Okay. Um, now we're going to take a journey back to 1792, yep. my favorite time period. Now this game's associated with a, a, a PC Engine game called Rondo of Blood. That came out in the early 90s in Japan and later on, actually not until really we in the United States. Um, but this is a game that's directly inspired by Super Metroid. Okay. And it is the reason why we call those kinds of games Metroidvania games. Okay, all right. Interesting. Um, and uh, I think that, you know, it, the game came out in early 97 in Japan, came out a little bit later in 1997. And when Greg identified Super Metroid as the first game he wanted to do for the video game book club on Kind of Funny, I was like, wouldn't it be fun to take the game that was a direct legacy of that game and do the second Kind of Funny book club for this? Okay. And so this is what we're doing because they are directly awesome. connected to each other. Awesome. I'm Look at these amazing this. 3D graphics. These are stunning. They haven't gotten any better. The lighting effects of the lightning. I mean, look at that. Yeah, hitting I mean, off the... It doesn't get better than this, literally. I mean, if I blink, my, if I close my eyes, the only thing that, that, that kind of tips it off that it's not PS4 is that it's in 4.3, mm -hmm. not widescreen. Otherwise, I could have Otherwise, been it would have totally been. It's indistinguishable cool. from the Order 1886 in this Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Height of video now, game graphic design. Now, cool little thing, you can actually control the loading thing by pressing up and down, which is one of those weird secrets that That's people don't fun. realize. So the game, you start by playing Richter, and you start at the end of the game. You're at the end um, of the game. You start at the end of, of the pre, like of, of, of a previous game, okay. a previous adventure, and it connects to what we're doing now. So we're going to get the cross or whatever. And by the way, Nick, I'm just going to warn you, Yeah. the voice acting here is notorious. Is it good? It is it is what it is, and you're going to see okay. in just a minute. I'm excited. There's now, Alucard. Oh, it's a... Die, monster. You Lord don't Dracula. belong in this world. It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make and them make your them slaves. Your slaves. But it sounds a little reminiscent of religions. 1980s your kids' cartoons, where everything had to be, soul. like back in the day, you know, when they, when they made cartoons, they were like, kids are stupid, so let's just have everyone talk really slowly <laughs> and over-dramatize everything. And then when we were kids, we are like, what is this shit? What is this shit? What is this shit? What are we watching? Um, having said that, though, it does go well with the pictures of the people behind the words, and because they all look like uh, 80s rock band, like 80s hair metal. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's very fun. Right, so you're beating Dracula. This is an easy game. You're done. Yeah, we're done. The game is, 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 o is over as soon as it begins. Now, there's a little secret, of course, to here that eventually you're going to have to die or whatever, but I like kind of messing around a little bit around here and doing my thing. You can get Dracula down a little bit. It's just fun to mess around. So you have to die? Eventually, yeah. I mean, we don't you want to kill him? No, you don't, you're not supposed to kill him. Well, that seems unfair. And I love how you're basically fighting Dracula as he was in the first game. Yeah. You hit it, You have to hit him in the head, and you can actually like, hit his cape to stop his projectiles from coming out. But ultimately, this isn't a fight you're meant to win. So there's no way you can actually beat him? No. I mean, that just sounds like a kind of a losing attitude. It is a losing attitude, attitude, but it's, it's, right for the, it's for the story. It doesn't... That's how the Colin Moriarty I know. What would Ramon say? Well, I don't know what Ramon would say. We can ask him when he comes here for a game of Reggae Show Marsh. But we're playing as Richter Belmont. Okay. And I'm quickly going through my uh, my um, my health there is there's on the left. I'm quickly kind of getting diminished. Well, you're not making those jumps. So now he'll turn into his monster form if you want to fight him here like this. Oh shit. That's significantly scarier. I would start with that if I were Dracula. So there. Um. So, he, so Maria, 
So here's Princess the thing about all this. Mario. Right. Maria comes out and she'll revive you. And if you play the Saturn version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night, mm -hmm. Maria will be playable. Wow. It's the only version of the game she's playable. And so she'll revive you, and so she's like sitting there now on the screen, all upset because you died. And that's something you're definitely going to want to see. And then we destroyed this version of, of Dracula. Okay. And you get a postcard, a nice little postcard from that little Polaroid. Now, I think that you could be skilled enough to beat it without dying if okay. you don't want Maria to summon. But I like summoning Maria. I feel like you're supposed to die there. Okay. I feel like that's part of the game is okay. to get Maria to kind of tether Richter and Maria together. So now they're tying in the story of Richter and to what will be the story of Symphony of the Night. So Shaft brought him back. The Dark Priest Shaft. Yeah, who's basically not the Shaft you might be thinking okay. of. I'm just thinking, I'm like, wow, this game has a lot of layers to it. It's uh, the Grim Reaper. Shaft! Remember the Grim Reaper that I was fighting on stage five in the original Castlevania on NES that I didn't have my holy water and I used the boomerangs yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. That is Shaft. Oh, that's Shaft. Okay. Why did Shaft, or a version of him. Why did Shaft uh, take a break from fighting crime in the streets of... Detroit, Jim? New York? We'll go with Detroit. Why did he uh, <laughs> Why did he take a break from that to come and summon Dracula back from the dead? Um, that's a good question. Okay. I don't really have the I don't have all the answers. I definitely, definitely don't have answer. I don't definitely have all the answers. Because you know they say some of the best stories. What? Harlem. So New York City. New York City. Same thing, Greg. Shut up, Greg. This is my moment to shine. Superman. I just love, one of the great things about Castlevania games, and you see it here, and you saw it in the beginning, even though the 3D graphics are very crude, yeah. is the the castle. Is one of the best parts of Castlevania. Yeah, the the way they image it, I love the turrets and like how they like branch off of each other in like really unrealistic ways. Yeah. Like the one that's branching off that one, like where Dracula is, it, it really indicates like the steps up to his castle, or to his hideout kind of layer area, which right. we were just in. I just love the imagery of the castle. It's awesome. <coughs> I love this shot. Bless you. They still not have made a Castlevania game this good, ever. They've tried. Well, at what point did they go 3D with Castlevania? Uh, the first 3D Castlevania game was on N64, Castlevania 64. Okay. And then they made a sequel to that called Legacy of Darkness. How was that? How was I that? thought they were good. A lot of people didn't like those games at the time, but I thought they were underrated. I thought they were fine games. They were just... So now we're going to play the actual game. Now we're... So you're not Richter Belmont anymore. No, now we're Alucard. Who were we in the first one? Simon, uh, Simon Belmont. Okay. So they could just come from a long legacy of Belmonts that got... Basically, the short end of the stick. They, they always have to go after and kill man. Exactly. Exactly. And Alucard is the son of Dracula. What is Alucard backwards? Dracula. Yes. Holy crap. And he's first introduced in Castlevania III um, as a friend of Trevor Belmont. Trevor is Simon's dad. So Dracula took a Belmont woman, knocked her up, and then they had a kid. How did this work out? It's how not quite how it, how no. it worked out. No. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. How do they, they get the giant wolves in there, man? Like, I don't know. That's not a question I often I've not pondered the game. So, see, there's a leveling system. So, this is one of the great things about okay. this game. First of all, it's, it's arcade. It's quick. You yeah. remember Castlevania being really yeah, stiff, you, right? Yeah, that, that, like, this is an arcade game. Yeah, you, you do get that that sort of... It's almost the antithesis of it, right? Is that you're, not, you're not kind of a uh, blocky tank-like movement. You've got a lot of uh, agility, so to speak. Exactly. And, I, and one of the great things, too, is if you press select on your controller, there's a map developing. Here. Oh, so this is where oh, you start okay. getting Symphony of the Night. Now, if you go here, you can see that up there. I can go up there, but I, I, I just don't. I have to be a bat. I, I can't get up there yet. Oh, can you become a bat? So, so it'll indicate here. When can you become a bat? You'll get that. You'll get that orb eventually. That'll become a bat or a wolf or mist or whatever. I, I choose bat. Oh no, I choose. Bat. And there's a. So you see on the map right where it's pulsating. Yeah. You can see that there's a hole up right on the map. Yeah. Indicating that you can go back there at some point and try again. That's cool. So th this is where this is where the influence comes from. And of course, these enemies, you recognize these enemies from the original Castlevania. And even that introductory area to the, to the, to the, uh, to the castle with the zombies in it and stuff is ripped right out of the original castle. So is it the same, in, in the canon of the universe, are we in the same castle as always? Or is it a whole different search story it's, that we're going through here? The castle reappears every hundred years in Castlevania War. And someone has to go in there and just And, and, and so that's when the Belmonts have to come and, and take care of it. Genocide. This is another thing. Like, there's a door here that you can only unlock with that switch from the other end. And there's, a, there's something that will increase your maximum, your maximum health. Yeah, that's a dope potion. That might be a magic potion. I don't quite remember what it's going to be. Um, so you can see already the, in, the great influences, because it, you have to think about this, I know this is nerdy, but this, this particular, we played this part of the original Castlevania. Right. I don't know if you remember this, you go I down just, the stairs, you yeah, fight, yeah. and then you jump back up. Right. So like they're redesigning some parts of the castle. Of course, the castle is much more expansive 
Um, and they've done this before. Castlevania 3 has homages, direct homages to the original Castlevania 2. So they, they like doing that on occasion. Of course, the huge wolf creatures went on there. No, yeah, I, I would remember those things. Most likely. Yeah. And so we can show people th this is a role-playing game. And, and this is what I think one of the major, the great things about, uh, about this is. You have all sorts of equipment that you can find, mm -hmm. things to equip on yourself. So the Necklace of Jay uh, it gives you plus five defense. Yeah. The cloak, just a black cloak for vampires and stuff. Alucard Mail gives you resistance. So he has all this great equipment on right now. The fact of the matter is that Alucard is very strong right now, but he won't be for very long. Why is that? I'm going to show you. Shaft oh. is going to have something to do with it. Oh. Taking a break from the busy streets of Harlem to come. So here we go. Is this the first boss battle? Is this Shaft? <laughs> your business here. I've come to put an end to this. Still befriending mortals. I'll not ask you to return to our side, but I demand you cease your attack. I will not. You shall regret those words. We will meet again. Bless you. Bless you. So here, he takes all of his equipment. Oh no. And weakens him. And now he has nothing. Well, that sucks. And just like that, you're defenseless. You don't even have a sword? Nope. Or a whip? If you go back to your equipment, nothing. Ah, oh, you just got two empty hands and a little <gasps> face. So now we, now we go. And, and the beauty of this game is it does not tell you what to do. And there's a bunch of different ways you can go. So you, got, you can't punch that thing and get some stuff? I could have, if I wanted to. There might be a heart in there. There might be some money. Actually, there was a heart. There was a heart. Okay. I was hoping it would be something more like a whip or a... At least a small dagger with which we could defend ourselves, but we can't. Nope, not yet. So, so what now you do with this guy is punch him in the face. Yeah, we gotta just punch, punch him, and then nice. he dropped the short sword. How convenient. Sweet. So now we can equip it. Cool. God, I mean, I don't know what we would have done if we, he didn't drop that short sword. We'd be screwed. But still, my weapons are way weaker than what I was having, and you see the reach of the sword is not. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's pretty bad to be perfectly honest. While we're on the subject. So we're going and we're cruising. And we're going and we're cruising. So here's another wall that we can't get now. We'll give us more. Um, that will give us more heart. Does that give you more of a tank for your life? Or just I think so. Yeah. Again, it's been. I haven't played this game since college, so or actually a little bit after that, I guess, because I played on PSP when Dracula Chronicles X came out. I wonder if just pissed off. So he, this guy gave me a different sword. So let's see what it's if it's stronger. The red rust. This is a two-handed sword. That doesn't seem. Well, let's try it. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna stay on this one. I, I I like the swords a little quicker. Okay. So this is a save point. Oh. Remember when you had to save your games manually? So to go in here, I you have to you have to press up, and then the coffin comes and saves your game. That's cool. So Alucard's clearly not human. No, he's not. He's, he's, he's not a vampire. Sorry, he's Got it. Okay. I think he's half and half. Oh, he's like laid. So here's a. Uh, all the benefits of vampire, none of the drawbacks. So you eventually, you, f you keep finding items called relics, right? The co co cube of Zoe uh, causes items to materialize, so okay. suddenly you're going to start getting more things. Right? I mean, you can you, Eventually this will all be filled in, and you can actually turn them on or off, uh, which is kind of cool. So that's another layer of the game. What is the point of turning them on? Some of them are annoying. Like, you can find things that will sh tell you item names or enemy names and all this kind of stuff. It, it causes some clutter on the screen oh, sometimes, gotcha, so okay. some people just like to shut them off. So now we're in the alchemy laboratory. So there's all these different sections of the map, but again, they're interconnected. So eventually this whole screen when you press select is gonna be a full map. Oh, okay. And the beauty of this game is that you de like there's a fake ending and a real ending. Right. You can beat the game in like five hours if you want to. You okay. get the fake ending. You find a certain item when you, find the, when you fight the last boss and you get access to the inverted castle and you go through the entire castle again, upside down. No way. And you go back and forth between them, it's pretty cool. That's cool. And of course you recognize these enemies, blood bones there that will never die. These particular guys are um, just to run their bones. We need a longer range thing. weapon here. Oh, God. This little dagger is not working for you, buddy. I know. There we go. And so we have, you know, there's some spikes here. We can do that to get rid of them. And then hit this thing, see what's in there. I got a hide cure, so uh, let's see if we can equip it. This will give us uh, some extra defense, gotcha. extra two points of defense. So again, there's some management here. There's some item management here. Now, do you ever get to a place where you're like, you have to consistently switch back and forth between them, or is it kind of a light resource management? It's. I would. Say, I would say this is about as heavy as it gets. Okay. There like, are, you never get to a place where you're like, okay, well, shit, I gotta swap weapons like super fast or swap equipment. No, you can do that. I mean, because some things will give you like different resistances and strengths and weaknesses. But I don't think the game. The thing about this game is it's not hard. Right. So, um, it's just time consuming if you play the game properly and you, if you, uh, you know, uh, leather shield. If you take your time and don't rush through it, then you should always be equipped to take on the um, 
the next thing that's uh, standing in your way. But of course, there could be next things standing in your way because plural, because there's no there's there's times where you can go in different directions. So man, just playing this again just brings back memories, man. So I I remember this game came out in early October 1997. I remember clear as day getting this game, um, and uh, being so excited about it, and so surprised about how good it was. I just would buy anything with Castlevania on it. Right. So I, w I had no expectations. But it ended up being an extraordinary game. And um, an extraordinary influential game. And it spawned a series of Castlevania games, uh, like-minded Castlevania games, on DS and uh, G well, first GBA, starting with Circle of the Moon, and then DS. There's about seven of them, I think. That are all Metroidvania-style Castlevania games. The thing that's disappointing about it is that they stopped inex inexplicably in 2007 and 2008 making them. Yeah. What happened with that? What's I don't know. That? I have no idea why they stopped. I guess the sales weren't great, but I, I, it's hard for me to imagine that they weren't. And it's hard for me to imagine that these games are expensive to make. Um, so you see here the sub-weapon, so I have a dagger now. Oh. And I love this. You know how the dagger's all slow-moving in the original one? Yeah. He like Look how he, look how fast it is. Look how cool it is when he throws it. Damn. It's like a ninja star. It's awesome. M much more useful. Do you run out of daggers? Or do you you do. The hearts here are also currency for that. I got it. See? So there's, and you can find all sorts of different, you know, we saw the Holy Water on the Cross when we fought Dracula and when we died um, with Maria. What's the resistance thunder? So these, so you can find, um, yeah, where are they? Yeah, you can find these items. So this is like, if I'm fighting, for instance, a boss that uses a lot of lightning, I can use this to resist it. Okay. Potions, of course, give me some AP, or HP, rather. Um, so, oops, so we're going, we're moving. So what are your thoughts so far? Do you do you, do you see something I, special here? Yeah, I definitely see the progression. Um, it it I would not look at this normally and think, okay, this is one of the greatest games ever made. Um, it's cool. It it has a lot more depth than the original Castlevania. Obviously, like you just move that piece over there, and that's a little bit of a puzzle solving element. Um, I don't know. I have to get my hands on it. I think to really play it and see how it feels. Do you want? Would you like to? Sure. Use the D-pad. You can use the analog sticks in this game. Well, that's my first. Episode. So you remember these guys? We fought these guys a bunch yeah, yeah, in, in yeah. Grim Reaper Stage Two. It's coming low, coming low on me. Wow. Watch your HP. You're almost dead. You have 20 HP left. Floaty. It is right. It's very. It feels very different from any other Castlevania game before it. Oh, what was that? Why do I keep doing that? Oh, are you pressing? Triangle. Oh, okay, yeah, that's your dash back. Oh, look at that. You can use your shield. Sweet. He's just a cool character. How do you like. use the uh, throwing daggers? Uh, up and attack. I'm going to jack this guy up. Oh, he's dead. What's up? It feels, uh, it feels a lot, it's very anime. You know what I mean? It is very anime. That's, yeah, I mean, it's... It is a very Japanese game. So Castlevania is a very Japanese game, but um, it definitely started to borrow from the less stiff conventions of the games that came out after the trilogy on NES right. and Super Castlevania and all those Rondo of Blood. So and Bloodlines on Genesis. I mean, these were all stiff Castlevania games. That, that, well, and that's so now you have the axe you can you know throw in an arc up and if you want to. This is the other great thing too is that you know we were talking about accidentally picking up weapons that you didn't want. Right. And how that was the bane of every Castlevania fan's existence in Castlevania 1 and 3. What does this keep happening? Because you're picking the axe up. So it's, right. this is what I'm saying. So instead of saying, oh, you have the axe now, it's like, are you sure you want the axe? Right. Here's the dagger that you just had in case you want that instead. So there's no such thing anymore as accidentally picking up the items you don't want. Gotcha. And the axe, of course, is a very powerful weapon. Well, I'm keeping the axe. Now, this uh -oh. is a boss fight. No, so let's see how you do. Good. This is the first boss fight in the game. It's, you have to go over to the right. Make me wait for it, huh? Careful, you have like only one more use. And you're low on HP. You might want to, um, oh god, oh. you might want to press uh, start and go to equip and go to, uh, and your leather shield replace with your potion. Um, and then go back into the game, press circle really quickly. That should give you some health. 
and then yeah, I go like, so now you have 50, you should have, yeah, 52, so you're a little more equipped to take these guys on. Yeah, these guys want to Now if together. I go back and I re-equip that shield? Yeah, you can. It should give you some added defense. Do I have to pull it out? You don't have to pull it out, it should just give you defense automatically, but it can block projectiles. Block that. Yeah, it won't be able to block everything. Some shields are stronger than others, of course. Getting the hang of it. Shit. Okay, well, that was just a one ahead ass whooping here. Why does it keep turning me around? I like how they work together. Ah, big kill. Alucard is dead, yeah. That's Damn it. it. So, I mean, that's a good taste of Castlevania Symphony yeah. of the Night, I think. So, to remind everyone out there, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, I love this death screen mode. <sighs> Let us go out this evening for pleasure. The night is still young. Jeez, all right. I'm down. Where are uh, we going? You, you probably go back to the castle. Uh, so, uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night uh, is available as a PSN or PS1 classic for PS3, for Vita, and for PSP. You can go back and play it on your PS1. If you have a Japanese Saturn, you can play it on, on Saturn. You can also play it on Xbox 360 as a, a downloadable game there. Um, it is our game of the month uh, for our video game book club. We'll be playing this together and enjoying it together, just like we did with Super Metroid last month. Um, and this seems like a logical conclusion uh, to, since Super Metroid was our first game and Super Metroid really begot Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which then begot a bunch of other games. Of course, Symphony of the Night is better than Super Metroid, but that's for we'll leave that for the conversation, of course. Uh, so, for more on all things video games, more things Castlevania, and all things fun and retro and, and old, and all things new and fresh, and Nick Scarpino. I'm fresh and old. He's fresh and old. Keep it tuned to Kind of Funny Games. <laughs>